I travel to a hundred different countries in search of the best one. It's day three on this remote island. Oh, it could actually be day six. I don't know, because the sun never f***ing sets. There's no running water here, so I haven't showered in a week. I'm standing next to Abe Lincoln's head. We're being rescued. Five miles, one of the most iconic places. Okie dokie. Over the last 18 years of filmmaking, geez, it's a long time. Started filmmaking when I was young. I've made films on every continent. I've been to more than 100 countries, and that includes thousands of towns and cities. So I thought to myself, hmm, why not make a list? A list that, in my opinion, um, with my experience, my experience as a filmmaker, are the top 10 places on earth to travel to. And if your favorite place didn't make my list, comment below and let me know where this is and uh, why it's so great. And the most convincing one, I'll come there and fly you there and we'll make a film together. But I'm convinced that these are the, the 10 best. I've based these top 10 places on a very comprehensive rating scale out of five stars. Please note that I'm being ruthlessly strict with the scoring here because these are the top 10. So if it's like a three out of five, then that, that's good. That's like really hard. I'm breaking them all down into five subsections. One, price. Two, the cultures and the stories there. Three, the scenery. Four, restrictions like safety. And five, food. That was the most important one. Okay, let's start off with number 10, Antarctica. Until just over a year ago, I, I didn't even have Antarctica on my bucket list. I just thought it was somewhere that I would never be afforded the opportunity. It just seemed kind of unattainable. However, I got a phone call. Yeah, yeah. Go to Antarctica. Yeah. And asked to shoot a film there where we got dropped off in the middle of Antarctica and had to survive for 50 hours. It was possibly one of the hardest shoots I've ever done. It's super slippery. Makes it really, really tough to film. However, let's rank it. It is number 10 out of like a thousand different places around the world. So let's talk about price first. There's two ways to get there. One is by boat. It's very dangerous and risky and takes a long time. And the other one's by plane. Very expensive. Transportation costs, I mean, I mean <laughs> your feet. Accommodation for me was in a thermal tent and we were in a very remote area. Also there's a cost beforehand because of all the gear to keep you warm. You gotta wear layer after layer after layer after layer after layer. Like I almost got frostbite there from shooting without my gloves. It was really really intense. Wherever you go in Antarctica there's a leave nothing behind policy which means literally leave nothing behind which makes the toilet situation with price, five stars means very cheap and one star means super expensive. So Antarctica scores two out of five stars for the price. Then on the cultural side, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, there's no one there. However, it's very, very rich in storytelling. There's a lot of unexplored territory. There's a lot I did there, like I made a song on a glacier that's never been walked on before. really creative and innovative in an area like Antarctica. So on a cultural storytelling scale, culture being non-existent, storytelling being very high, we'll cut it down the middle and call it 2.5 stars out of five. Then with food, it's survival food, okay? So it's like MREs and nuts and but on the cuisine side of things, I'm not gonna rate it very high. So for food, it's a two star rating. I could not eat that. And then this is obviously why it's on the list. For scenery, it's beyond five stars. You have to be there to truly experience it. I was stuck in blizzards and there was times I couldn't see anything. The sun never sets. So it also gives you more time to shoot. This is during the summer period. Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go there at the wrong time. It's just dark the entire time. So yeah, five stars for scenery. Then for the restrictions rating, five being very high, like almost impossible to get to, zero being no restrictions. This number will be subtracted from the total of the rest of the stars and then divided up and then we're gonna work out the ending. Just so you understand how this rating system works. It's like 
maths. As I said, it's obviously very difficult to get to Antarctica. Super safe when it comes to crime, but it's also dangerous when it comes to crevasses and things like that. And then if you had to get hurt, it's obviously very difficult to get you out of there. With all this being said, I'm gonna give it a pretty bad ranking. That's three out of five stars. So Antarctica gets 2.1 stars overall. Remember, I'm being brutally strict with judging these places. These are the best in my opinion, places in the world to travel to. Next, number nine, Manhattan, New York. I had the opportunity to live in New York six or so years ago, working on a startup with my friend Casey Neistat, getting into the rankings, starting off with price. I'm speaking about Manhattan in New York, the island, ridiculously expensive. Just for instance, the average cost for a three-star hotel is around $250 a night. And that's even if you can find the accommodation in the first place. It's to eat if you're staying in a hotel and you can't cook and that sort of thing, you can get away with around $30 a day unless you're just eating like really unhealthy street food. That's like really on a minimal budget. Traveling around the city, if you're going by cab, is pretty expensive. You're gonna be spending about $10 just to get around in the bottom section. But I'd highly suggest the subway. For the Metro Rail, a seven day pass is $34. It's around $5 per day. You can also take a city bike around if you want to. If you're going on the bike lane on the west or the east side, it's just really beautiful. And this sets you back around $5 for 30 minutes. Because the price is so high for everything, it gets a two out of five stars. Star rating. Then when it comes to storytelling and culture, it's exceptionally high. It's, it's so rich in stories, it's so rich in, with people. There's never ending stories all over the place. In every street you can go down, you can find the most incredible person, you can find the most unique people. So as a filmmaker, I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then when it comes to cuisine, to food, if you are rich, you can get the most exceptional food. I mean, there is access in Manhattan to the most amazing restaurants in the world. As a filmmaker, sometimes you get hired to go in and film at these places and I got to like eat golden chicken wings this one time. They were like a thousand dollars. Ridiculous. However, on a budget of 30 to 40 dollars, I'm giving it a, a really lower rating. Two out of five stars. And then as far as the scenery goes, the skyscrapers and crazy places to see and there are beautiful parks like Washington Square Park. And then you should get onto the roof tops to see the sunset it's just it's really quite something three out of five stars then talking about restrictions I mean obviously if you're gonna be working in America and you're going to be filming performing a job there getting a work permit is really difficult a visa is a little bit easier to get in Manhattan the crime rate has dropped according to news articles and that kind of thing however don't, don't hate me New Yorkers but it's the articles you can't just put your drone up and fly it there. That's a no-go. All in all, I'm going to be minusing 2.5 stars for restrictions, which totals New York City to 2.25 stars out of five. Number eight, Mumbai, India. I've traveled to Mumbai four times now. I've directed TV commercials there. I've made short films there. I've made YouTube videos there. And in doing so, I've made great lifelong friends. And Mumbai will always hold a really, really special place in my heart. I've got a really good understanding of the full spectrum of what Mumbai has to offer as a filmmaker. So speaking about price, for the average three-star hotel, you're gonna spend about $50 per night. Transport is super cheap. If you're gonna go around on a tuk-tuk, it's about 80 cents per mile. It is reasonably dangerous on the roads and it's very chaotic and it's all over the place, but this is the fastest way to get around the city. I mean, you can also take a train, but I experienced that once and it's intense. The food as well is relatively cheap. You can eat the street food, it's just, very spicy. So for the overall price of everything, relatively cheap, it gets four out of five stars. What's really important to note here, and that goes for every place that I'm gonna be speaking about, is to ensure that you always couple up with a local. This doesn't only ensure that you are culturally respectful, safe, and aren't ripped off, but it's the only way to uncover the richest stories possible. And in saying that, India is super rich in culture. You don't have to travel far at all to witness it. It's just everywhere. Music is also really important to me and India has a deep, diverse musical and rhythmic background as well as with dance and just all forms of expression. Therefore, culture and stories get a 4.5 out of 5 star rating. And then when it comes to food, as you know, everything is just so spicy. If you're into this kind of thing, then that's great. For me, I can't 
really deal with it. And then there's like also some crazy kind of things. Like I ate this leaf that was like on fire the one time. That was pretty cool. So for food, I give it a three out of five. Then on a scenery front, a landscape front, it is beautiful when you look at it from wides and the landscape shots. There is a lot of pollution. So with taking that into account, I give it 2.5 out of five stars. With the restrictions, the only real major restrictions are petty theft. There's quite a bit of it. Just watch your things. Be streetwise. There's no real big restrictions for shooting in areas. It's relatively easy to get a visa to go there for a lot of passports. It's just a, a quick thing online. So the restrictions kind of sit in the middle at 2.5 out of 5 stars, which brings the total for Mumbai to 2.3 out of 5 stars. Next is Bukaramanga in Colombia. Just outside Bukaramanga, I visited a village to film a philanthropic project where I stayed on this remote island in the middle of nowhere for around six days. What I'm gonna do with the prices is base it on Bukaramanga and not obviously on this island that I stayed on because that's where we're storing everything inside. Yeah, here's my editing table and this is where we sleep in hammocks. So yeah, I'm gonna speak to the surrounding areas. For the price of a three-star hotel, you're gonna spend around $60 a night, but a basic meal there costs $4. It's pretty cheap. You can get around on buses there for the average fare of around 60 cents. But in Bukaramanga, the best way to experience the city is by foot. For the overall price, three out of five stars. So for culture and stories, it was one of those places where I was like, there was too many stories to tell in the short amount of time that I was there. I wish I was there for longer. When venturing into the jungle, you'll find people who are so in touch with their indigenous ways and traditions. 3.5 out of five stars. The food where I was was interesting a lot of fresh fruit though which is fantastic giving it three stars as for scenery it's like antarctica a lot of it is untouched and beautiful and raw and it also feels dangerous the, the rivers around there have alligators in them and stuff <laughs> there are gators which is scary when fishing <laughs> what do we do now? But the overall scenery is exquisite. It gets four stars. Restrictions are pretty low in most areas for filming. Like, I mean, it's pretty much out in nature in a lot of the areas. Just please, again, it's act with respect. Out. Never take your camera and like go put it in someone's face. It's, that's the worst possible thing you can do. This obviously goes for every area, anywhere you are in the world. So for restrictions, it's pretty low at two stars. The total for Bukaramanga, Colombia being 2.8 stars. For number six and number five, we have a tie. I'm gonna start off with the first one, just being Albania, Tirana. This was a really interesting story of how I ended up there and I was with a whole bunch of professional snowboarders and I went to go film there with them in, in a really remote part of Tirana in the middle of pretty much nowhere. We had to drive up this whiny road and then ended up in this weird like big house kind of thing and, and then we had a helicopter because it's the only way we could get to the mountain peaks and yeah this was just a uh, this was a crazy trip and on a filmmaking side of things fantastic in Tirana the price of a three-star hotel is pretty costly it's $140 per night more or less food is on the average side of things it's like $11 per meal to get around the city on a local bus is around 50 cents per mile where I went you have to rent a car which costs around $15 per day so for the price, because it's kind of all over the place, it's 2.5 stars. Albanians are known for their hospitality and friendliness. Locals are really welcoming to tourists. So on the cultural side of things, it's 3.5 stars. The food is a mix of Mediterranean and Balkan flavors. Expect kind of a lot of lamb. Other than that, like the food isn't really super exciting for me. Again, 2.5 stars. There is a stark contrast in Albania when it comes to scenery. In summer, you can expect to enjoy the beautiful Mediterranean beaches. And in winter, you can experience amazing snowy peaks with stunning landscape. For me, I was there during the snowy season. Exceptional. As a filmmaker, five stars. The restrictions here are low. It's pretty simple and easy to get visas. Another great thing about being where I was in Albania is there's zero soul reception, like nothing. So I was forced to be offline for seven days straight. That, that's actually a very common thread throughout all the places on this list. And I've only realized that now. Antarctica, the island in Bukaramanga, and come to think about a lot of the places to come. No soul reception. 1.5 stars for restrictions. Bring the overall amount for Tirana, Albania to three stars. Just changing the environment here a bit. I was getting a bit stagnant in that other office. Number five, well number six, because it was a tie, is Taipei, Taiwan. 
I visited Taipei to make a film with a local named Show Show, where the goal is to spread awareness of the beauty Taiwan has to offer by completing one of the most difficult cycle trails in the world. I did cheat, yes, because I used an electric bike, but I still completed it, which surely counts for something. I spent around two weeks there and traveled around a lot, which gave me a good indication of averaging out costs. The price of the necessities varies a lot, as you can eat at a lot of street vendors cheaply for around $2 per meal. A three-star hotel costs around $70 per night. Transportation is around $1 per mile if you go by taxi, but renting a bike, which is very common, is around $15 per day. Therefore, the ranking in price 3.5 stars. Taipei is filled with culture due to its ancient heritage. People here are really friendly, they're super polite, they're a little shy at first. But once you get to know your intentions and why you are making a film there, they open up really quickly and they start to share their stories, making for exceptional storytelling. This along with the experience that I had with Show Show, four stars. Food, however, ooh, that was a different story. I decided to go the street vendor kind of route and, uh, and, and yeah, that was crazy. I ended up eating chicken's ass and a bunch of other weird shit like bugs and things like that. It's just not for me, okay? Therefore, a ranking of 2.5 stars. After experiencing the mountains of Taipei on a bike and walking around the city, capturing its beautiful architecture and traveling to one of the only surfing spots where I managed to only catch one wave. However, the beaches and the cliff faces that hang over the ocean were exceptionally beautiful. Therefore, for scenery, four stars. Restrictions for filming are pretty tight, can get permits and that kind of thing, and it's super safe, which helps the restriction score, so I'm giving it a two. Taking the overall score of Taipei to three stars. Counting down the list to number four is Tokyo, Japan. I went to Tokyo around five years ago to make a film about robots. And this is how I ended up meeting a local there named Shin. He, he took me literally everywhere around Tokyo. I had the greatest experience there. Another added benefit for filmmakers is that Tokyo houses the world's biggest camera store. It is huge. And speaking of price, it is reasonably expensive. It's about $150 per night in a three-star hotel. Food is around $16 per meal. And then if you take the train, which is super fast, hyper-efficient, it costs around $1.2, $1.3 per trip. Overall, the price gets two stars. The culture there is really interesting. It takes some time to adjust to, but when you get Get to meet individuals you get to meet people there's an array of different kinds of people and the, again the storytelling is really rich therefore 3.5 stars the food is astounding so far out of all these places japan is the greatest with food therefore 4.5 stars then landscapes and scenery just diverse like there's nature there's city centers graffiti there's colors everywhere it's the whole place it feels so cinematic therefore four stars the restrictions are low. The city's safe from my experience. Visas aren't really difficult to get for Japan. Cameras are really welcomed all over Tokyo. Therefore, restrictions are super low at 1.5 stars. Bringing the overall rating of Tokyo, Japan to 3.1 stars. And just back to the other office quickly. I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Element. I drink Element every single day. Every day. Already tasty. Makes you drool. That's the canned one, which is easy. But the other ones come like this in multiple different flavors. My favorite flavor being the watermelon flavor. You just pull one of these bad boys out your pocket. No colorants, look. What's the point? So good. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's how you're supposed to drink it, but that's how I drink it. Electrolyte deficiency sucks! It causes brain fog, which obviously is, you don't want that for when you're editing. That's the worst possible thing to have in any circumstance. Brain fog. Who wants that? <laughs> okay. Element came up with a fantastic offer for you. Just go to drink element, that's L-E-M-T, no, fuck, I'm so dyslexic. LMNT.com slash Dan Mace. Also, if you don't like it, you can just send it right back to them and they'll give you your money back. Click on the link in the description for more information. Back to the video. Number three on the list is the Masai Mara in Kenya. 
I was lucky enough to go to Kenya to make a film where we travel to every single one of the 42 tribes throughout Kenya. That's a once in a lifetime opportunity. This film was about bringing people together that were segregated, but music is one language that everybody speaks. So we went to every single tribe throughout Kenya and we created a soundtrack, a new anthem for Kenya, where we took diegetics, real sounds from every single tribe and we created this beautiful anthemic soundtrack. And that soundtrack actually went on to being number one played on the radio for a really long time. That project holds a really special place in my heart. And then when I traveled down to the Maasai Mara is when I met the Maasai people that are really, really tall and they jump when they're happy. Yeah, just beautiful people felt so, so welcome. However, okay, in the Maasai Mara, the price is reasonably expensive. If you are going to want to go down the game lodge route and stay in kind of the fancy lodges, or you can stay with people in and around the community and that's obviously the prices are significantly lower. It's, it's, so it's really difficult thing to kind of pinpoint the accommodation prices. A taxi costs around $2 per mile and it's around $9 per meal. So yeah, it's, it's a bit here and there, which is the reason it gets three stars. Moving on to culture, as I said, the greatest, cannot beat it, exceptional, unlike any place. These last three places are destinations you have to travel to, therefore, Five out of five. The food is generally a lot of meat. If you're not into that, then you're not gonna really enjoy it. There are vegetable options and that kind of thing, but it is, yeah, it's very, very kind of farm to table kind of thing, which is a good thing. And then if you wanna like impress the Maasai people and do something uh, more traditional, you, you can drink uh, goat's blood and stuff like that. Yeah, therefore food, three stars. The scenery is unlike anything you'll find anywhere else. I mean, there's wildlife, there's rhinos. I had an experience where like, I was so close to a rhino. It was terrifyingly beautiful. Obviously, dangerous. Don't go roaming around freely like that. We're there with rhino conservation people. This is just beautiful landscapes. If you've ever seen The Lion King, that's literally the sunset every night. It's a golden hour. Shooting in golden hour there is unbeatable. Therefore, for this category, 4.5 stars. Speaking specifically to the Maasai Mara here, it is extremely safe. Visas are really simple to get. The language barrier isn't bad. Shooting is permitted throughout. Flying a drone is really simple. Therefore, the restriction rate is really good at 0.5. Bringing the overall total for the Masai Mara in Kenya to 3.7 stars. The second greatest place to make a film in the world, in my opinion, is Kathmandu, Nepal, a place called Kalaguan. Throughout this video, I've said you, I can't describe it unless you've been there. You have to experience it for yourself. I don't want to get deep here or anything like that. There's something about Nepal. One, it's the people, it's the language, it's the cadence of the way the people speak, it's the calmness, uh, it's the humility. It's, it's also reasonably small and it's just, it's, it's goddamn beautiful. Coming down to these final two, it was very difficult to make a decision, so I had to go to the chart, the ranking system, okay? I flew into Kathmandu and then I took a pretty long bus ride to the top of a mountain to form a philanthropic project for around a week. But when I arrived in Kologwan, and this is what I said the current thread of all of this is, there, there is zero soul reception. So I was forced to be there in that environment and experience it for what it is. And because there's no hotels up there, we're invited into what's called a homestay, which means to stay with a family, with locals. When breaking it down, I'm going to speak to the prices based in Kathmandu, which is like the main city. It costs around $50 to stay in a three-star hotel. And then if you are doing a homestay like we did, make sure that you have money, you offer money. As, as a culture, they're so giving, at least contribute and, and figure out what the contribution should be based upon the payments that you would be paying if you're staying elsewhere. Per meal, you're looking at around $7. Unless again, if you're staying with locals, there'll be an abundance of food. And then travel around the city in a taxi is around 50 cents per mile, which gives the price a score of four stars. And then when it comes to culture, like I said, I describe Nepal as the friendliest place I've ever been. I've never felt more accepted by people. The sharing of the stories flow so naturally. People just want to tell you stuff. And for this reason, culture and stories is five stars. When it comes to food in Kalaguan, the livestock and the vegetables goes 
you know, it's super fresh, super healthy. However, there is no running water. That makes it extremely difficult. And then in Kathmandu, the water is a little bit sus. So those stars are knocked down slightly. So therefore, food is three stars. There is no need to speak about scenery here. I can show you some clips. It is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Therefore, scenery, five stars. On the restriction side of things in the main cities and tourist attractions, permits are needed. When you travel outside of the city, filming is really easy. There is no real restrictions. Again, there is a slight language barrier. Visas are pretty easy to get. And, and outside of Kathmandu, Kathmandu has a little bit of petty theft, but the more rural areas, it is really, really safe. Therefore, 1.5 stars for restriction. And this leaves Kathmandu, Nepal with 3.8 stars. And then coming down to the number one, the greatest place on earth, in my opinion, to travel to is Cape Town, South Africa. I've luckily been afforded the opportunity to live in other places around the world, but somehow there's this gravitational force that just keeps pulling me back here. And that force is because it is just so goddamn great. There is no place on earth like Cape Town, South Africa. Beaches, mountains, wine farms, deserts, the greatest music you've ever heard, festivals, table mountain, some of the greatest waves in the world, best beaches in the world. I think I said beaches already, but I needed to say that again. Nature, like gardens and trees and animals. And the thing here is that all of this is in like 20 miles. It is insane, but I'm gonna break it down further. The price point here is really good. It's around $80 per night for a three-star hotel. An average meal at a restaurant is around $6 to $8 per meal. There are multiple versions of transport. Some are a lot more dangerous. Like if you wanna jump in a mini taxi, probably one of the cheaper options. That's around $1 to get really far, actually. But then there's my city buses, which are good. And that's about $2. Therefore, price gets four stars. Culture and stories, just gonna say it up front, five stars. It is so rich in culture. It is, there is just so much to do in Cape Town. There's beaches on the, on the top of a mountain. It's insane. That's landscape, sir. But I'm just getting excited. Well, there are people from all walks of life. Uh, most of my films are made in the township areas because the stories and the heritage is just run so deep and the culture is just so beautiful. Food, because there's such a diversity of people, every single kind of cuisine made by the culture that represents that cuisine. Therefore, food gets five stars. And landscapes aren't even gonna talk about I'm just gonna show you some footage. Clearly, five stars. Slam. The restrictions, though, is the only thing that brings this down, or it would have been a five. Visas are extremely easy to get to come into Cape Town. There is every single language. The restrictions on language are like zero. However, then, yes, I have to be honest about the crime. It is bad. So there's areas where crime is bad, and that brings this rating down. However, again, if you couple up with a local, you won't end up in dangerous areas. You just have to stay clear of certain areas, and it's safe. A little bit of petty theft here and there, but I mean, people just focus on the bad shit that happens here. There is much more good shit. Therefore, I'm going to have to give it 2.5 stars minus. So this brings the overall total to a high, a staggering high of 4.1 stars out of five. And yeah, I'm gonna take you to the other office now to end the film. Thank you for watching. And like I said in the beginning, if your favorite place is not on the list, let me know in the comments convince me and I'll pin the top one and travel there with you or if you live there I'll come to you and we'll make a film together make it convincing uh, yeah I really want to know more about this place other than that don't forget you're awesome bro and I'll see you soon <laughs>